Hello, my name is Andrew Feldman. I am one of the founders and the CEO at Cerebrus Systems. Cerebrus was founded in 2016. And uh, today we have a little north of 350 engineers in the Cerebrus family. We have offices in Silicon Valley, San Diego, Toronto, and Tokyo. And we have customers across North America, Asia, and Europe. Our mission is to change compute forever to build deep learning systems that deliver orders of magnitude more performance than graphics processing units, to deliver compute at a fraction of the power and the space, and to make it easy for software users to engage with our technology by requiring no changes to their software. We began our journey to transform the, the compute industry by announcing in 2019 that we yielded the largest chip ever made. This was a 400,000 core, 46,000 square millimeter, 1.2 trillion transistor part. Now this changed the industry and achieved something that in the 70 year history of the computer industry had never previously been achieved. Now we didn't rest on our laurels. In April of this year, we announced the Wafer Scale Engine 2. This was a seven nanometer version of the Wafer Scale Engine. It too had 46,000 square millimeters of silicon, only this time it had 2.6 trillion transistors. 850,000 AI optimized cores, more than 40 gigabytes of on-chip memory, 20 petabytes of memory bandwidth, 220 petabits of fabric bandwidth. It was manufactured by TSMC at the seven nanometer node. Now we've received many accolades over the course of the past five years. None means more to us than this. This is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation's Museum of Innovation in their headquarters in Taipei. So important was the wafer scale engine in their view to the history of the compute industry that they built an entire exhibit dedicated to its achievement. So here's the exhibit at TSMC's headquarters featuring the uh, Cerebrus wafer scale engine as a high point in chip design. To give you an idea of uh, the difference between uh, uh, a GPU and the wafer scale engine, uh, here is a photo. On the right is uh, uh, an NVIDIA A100, 54 billion transistors and 826 uh, square millimeters of silicon. On the left is the wafer scale engine. This is the seven nanometer version, 2.6 trillion transistors and 46,000 square millimeters of silicon. Now big chips in our industry process information more quickly, producing results in less time. And that's because they have more compute resources uh, on chip. The, the wafer scale engine has 850,000 cores, which is 123 times more than the largest GPU. It has 1,000 times more on-chip memory, 12,000 times more of the precious memory bandwidth, and more than 40,000 times more fabric bandwidth. Now, it's our belief that you can't build a, a race car engine and put it in a Volkswagen and expect race car performance. So we don't, we build the entire race car. And this is our unit of sales. This is a, a, a Cerebra CS2. It is 15 rack units tall. It fits in a standard data center rack. Here's a deployment uh, in a data center in Santa Clara. Uh, what you have here is the CS2 and you have uh, pink cables, our 100 gigabit ethernet, which feed the, uh, the CS2, these are 1200 gigabit ethernet lanes into the CS2. Some of our customers uh, in the enterprise, in the US national laboratories, and supercompute centers, and the military and intelligence in enterprise, we've done pretty well in, in the pharma space, including GlaxoSmithKline and AstraZeneca, Peptologix, Enference. We've had uh, a great deal of work being done in drug discovery and therapeutic development, national laboratories at Argonne and at Lawrence Livermore, cancer therapeutics, material science, AI for science. We're integrated into the eighth largest supercomputer, a machine called Lassen, as a dedicated AI accelerator. Uh, at supercompute centers, at Pittsburgh Center for Supercompute, uh, we are part of a, uh, an AI cloud 
where dozens of different research teams in, in, engage in research, including NLP, genomics, COVID research. We are a foundation for uh, an AI supercomputer called Neocortex with multiple CS, uh, CS1s in addition to uh, HP Superdome Flex. We also have deployments in the military and in the intelligence communities. What do our customers say? Well, at Argon, they say, quote, we have a cancer drug response model that's running many hundreds of times faster on that chip, on Cerebrus than on conventional GPUs. At AstraZeneca, they say training, which took over two weeks on a large cluster of GPUs was accomplished in just over two days. Now, the combination of extraordinary technology, uh, never before achieved results, Happy Customers has led to a fair bit of press. I think we are the, the, the only company that in the same month was on the cover of IEEE Spectrum and, the, and had a, a feature piece in The New Yorker. I think it's fair to say that that covers a fair bit of, 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 of earth. But what we want to talk about today, now that we've got the backswing out of the way, is uh, what we can do looking forward. Here is a very simple table. A graph or other. On the x-axis is model memory requirements. On the y-axis is compute requirements measured in petaflop days. Uh, now, in 2018, the largest model was BERT. It was 340, milli, uh, 340 uh, million parameters. Uh, in 2019, the largest model was T5. It had 11 billion parameters and took order 8,000 petaflop days, uh, 800 petaflop days to compute. In 2020, uh, OpenAI brought us GPT-3, which was 175 billion parameters, and Microsoft trained layers of uh, a network called 1T that had more than a trillion parameters and took 20,000 petaflop days to compute. What does this mean? It means that over the last two years, the models have gotten a thousand times larger. It means we've needed a thousand times more compute to train these models. GPT-3, that has 175 billion parameters, took 1,024 GPUs four months to train. Four months. So how do we prepare for this future? This is what we're doing. In the last few weeks, we have announced brain scale neural networking. 120 trillion parameter models can fit on a single CS2. This is 100 times larger than the current state of the art, and the current state of the art requires thousands of GPUs. We announced that we could build clusters of up to 192 uh, CS2s with near perfect scaling. And we announced that we could set up these clusters with push button ease. Let's dig in. The first step is compute disaggregation of memory and compute. That means we're separating the model memory and allowing it to grow independently from the compute. Compute in turn is also separated from model memory and it too can grow independent of memory. Let's look at how that works. We begin with the CS2, 850,000 cores on a single chip, 40 gig of memory. We've invented a new technology called MemoryX. The MemoryX technology allows you to support up to 120 trillion parameters off box and deliver the performance as if those parameters were on chip. The next step is our SwarmX interconnect technology. This allows near linear performance as we scale to up to 192 CS2 systems. That's one, 163 million cores, 192 systems times 850,000 cores is 163 million cores in a cluster. The final piece and a piece that's often forgotten and is one of the big bugaboos in our industry is how complicated it is to configure and work with very large clusters. What our work does is it allows you to set up 163 million core cluster with the programming ease of pushing a single button. It's easy as pie. Let's dig into each of these in turn. Extreme capacity. Let's talk about enabling the models of the future. 
We begin with the memory X technology. This allows us to support 120 trillion parameters on a single CS2. The memory X technology is four terabytes to 2.4 petabytes in capacity, which gives us support for 200 billion to 120 trillion parameters, not just the weights, but also with the optimizer state. It's a combination of our software, DRAM and flash in a hybrid storage way, plus a little internal compute for weight and uh, optimizer updates. This is scalable to the largest models of today, as well as a hundred times beyond the current state of the art. This is a foundation for a new, uh, a new execution mode called weight streaming. Weight streaming is built for extreme neural networks and allows us to keep the entire weights uh, on uh, the memory X technology off chip to stream the weights onto the CS2, to stream the data onto the CS2 and to hold the activations there. And this is a really important point in why the CS2 is faster and uses less power than alternative solutions because the wafer is so large because the wafer scale engine is so many cores and has so much memory, we can keep more memory resident, more information resident. In other words, we move less information and we move information less frequently. And that is the heart of accelerating performance in neural network compute. We do some nifty things here where we decouple weight optimization compute from uh, activation compute and from gradient compute. We stream the gradients off the wafer to the memory X technology. Now, one of the key elements in understanding how uh, a memory technology is performing is how good it is at keeping the utilization of your compute cores busy. How do we keep utilization very high? And here we're showing data that of the largest networks, GPT-3, and Microsoft 1T, the, the, the weight streaming execution model in combination with memory X keeps the uh, wafer scale engines 850,000 cores fully occupied at nearly 80% utilization. This is extraordinary and better than state of the art in any other system. So step one, uh, we, we showed how we extreme capacity was delivered by the wafer scale engine in combination with weight streaming in combination with the memory X technology. Now we're going to talk about extreme speed. Extreme speed or uh, time to answer is delivered by a cluster. And what our swarm X technology does is it allows us to deliver linear performance scaling up to 192 CS2s. Now the Swarm Interconnect technology first began tying 400,000 cores together in our CS1. It expanded to tying 850,000 cores together in our CS2. And now the Swarm X ties 163 million cores together in clusters of up to 192 CS2s. Weight streaming in combination with Memory X and Swarm X has some extraordinarily beneficial characteristics. It provides something called pure data parallel. What you can notice here is each of these CS2s communicates exclusively with the Swarm X technology and with the Memory X subsystem. Each CS2 is fully independent of the others. It never communicates with each other. This is really important because it's fundamental to making it easy to use. The weights are broadcast from the memory X technology through the Swarm X technology into the CS2s. Each of the CS2s is fed a portion of the data set through the data servers. Gradients are sent back through the Swarm X technology where they're reduced or combined with the gradient sent from other CS2s and delivered to the memory X technology. What this system does is it simplifies cluster building dramatically and allows near perfect linear scaling. Let's look at this challenge of scaling. Uh, there's a very interesting paper in ACM SIGGRAPH by two professors, Tim Rogers and Mahmoud Kari. It's called an academic's attempt to clear the fog of the machine learning accelerator war. What we have here is a simple graph. On the x-axis is number of chips and the y-axis is speed up 
This is what we care about. It is a reduction in time to get an answer. Now the black line is what's called linear scaling. If you go from one chip to two chips and the amount of time it takes is cut in half, that's linear scaling. If you go from one chip to 10 chips and the amount of time is cut to one tenth, that's linear scaling, that's the black line. Blue line is the TPU and the red line is a GPU. And what you see is in order to get a 10X speed up, it requires order 800 chips. So to increase performance by 10X, you pay 800 times the price, you pay 800 times the power draw. That, ladies and gentlemen, is sublinear scaling. And that is part of the complexity and expense of building large clusters. 800X the cost to get 10X the gain. That is not what we do. What we show is near linear performance scaling. If you wanna cut the amount of time it takes to do work, go from one system to two systems. It will, go, it will cut your time exactly in half. If you wanna do work in a 10th of the time, go from one system to 10 systems. If you wanna to go to 1 32nd the amount of time, go from one system to 32 systems. This is near perfect linear scaling and it's a characteristic that no other accelerator, CPU or GPU has ever shown on this workload. So what we've shown, step one, the weight streaming architecture in combination with memory X technology and the wafer scale engine allows us to attack the largest models ever made and to attack models a hundred times larger than the current state of the art. The wafer scale engine, the memory X technology, the swarm X technology and weight streaming allows us to build clusters to sizes never before attained and have those clusters deliver near linear performance. The final piece is making it easy to use. Distributed training, that is training models by breaking them up and spreading them over dozens or hundreds of small GPUs is punishingly difficult. And this is rarely talked about in the industry, but it is frequent for a single model spread over hundreds of GPUs to take months to set up. Each model requires months to set up over large clusters. That's unacceptable. The weight streaming software extends programming simplicity to clusters. We map the work to a single CS2, and then all you have to do is cut and paste. There is no complexity of partitioning individual layers or running model parallel. So what are the steps necessary to cluster 192 CS2s? Well, you compile the model for a single CS2, then you cut and paste, and that's it. Running a model on large clusters of CS2 is exactly the same as for a single CS2. All you do is specify the number of CS2s you want and paste the config file in, that's it. At Cerebrus, uh, we are interested in and passionate about pushing into new territory. Uh, we are uh, driven by the mission of enabling our customers to do things they can't currently do. These announcements are very much towards that end. 120 trillion parameter capacity on a single CS2. 163 million core clusters across 192 CS2 systems delivering near linear performance scaling, never been done before. Push button scaling, configure systems quickly and easily in clusters and then benefit from the near linear scaling. This allows you to train the largest known networks in a weekend, and importantly, it allows the community, our colleagues, to do work that has never before been accomplished. Finally, we are similarly passionate about enabling the community. It's not okay in our mind that these very large models are currently available only to a small number of super rich companies, the Googles and the, uh, uh, the Microsofts of the world. 
So what we're doing is we're enabling different forms of access to our technology. Of course, you can purchase CS2s and the associated memory X uh, and Swarm X technology. You can subscribe to CS2s in short term or longer term. We have solutions on premise, on partners premise and on our premise. And we have solutions in the cloud as well. All of this is in support of our goal of extending this path breaking work to larger and larger segments of the ML community. And with that, I'd like to open it up to some questions and to say thank you for, for having us. This is our fourth year uh, presenting at the AI Hardware Summit. We look forward to presenting next year in person, touch wood. Now we've got time for a few questions. Thank you.